Hello, George Romanich here. Today I am starting a mini series, but not so mini, on solving various problems related to Coriolis force. Now, my channel is almost two years old. I have over 600 subscribers. And I told you several times, at some point, I will stop introducing new concepts and start solving problems and doing exercises related to the concepts that I introduced. So that moment is now and I will start with Coriolis force. In the next 20, 10 to 20, maybe even 20 videos, I will solve various problems related to Coriolis force. This should be extra useful if you are a student. If you are a beauty blogger, you will probably not even stumble upon my channel, so this is completely not relevant to you. Coriolis force is apparent force, fictitious force, we would also say. That means it's a consequence of Earth being non-inertial coordinate system. Now, in these videos, I will not go over and re-explain and re-derive Coriolis force. I expect that you already know that and you watched my previous videos or some other videos on YouTube or even better, read some books about that. So the concepts that we are going to use are the following. I will write them down over here and this is what we will mostly use in solving various problems. First is that Coriolis force F core, let's say, is equal minus 2m omega cross V where m is mass of the object on which Coriolis force acts, omega is angular velocity of non-inertial reference frame. In our case, it is beautiful planet Earth, so angular velocity of planet, that's omega, and v is velocity uh, in respect to Earth's surface, in respect to non-inertial reference frame. Of course, I derive this equation, so I expect that you will you will know it. The next is Coriolis parameter is 2 omega where this omega is intensity of this vector over here sine phi and phi is a latitude in the case of earth of a spherical object such as earth and also so phi measures the sense of vorticity as I said sense of rotation due to Earth's rotation at given latitude. We can see already when phi is 90 degrees, that's North Pole, then the sense of rotation is at its maximum because I explain in a separate video, Coriolis force in horizontal direction can be easily described as the alignment of the local vertical to omega, angular velocity of Earth and local vertical is completely aligned with omega at north and south poles and there is some level of misalignment at other latitudes that's why Coriolis force is weaker at other latitudes and it's completely not aligned with omega at the equator and hence Coriolis force doesn't exist at the equator. This is vector equation so if we calculate uh, acceleration from this equation and we put it in scalar form, then we will get two horizontal components, one in the zonal direction, so Coriolis acceleration in the zonal direction, that means from west to east, positive eastward, and that would be du dt due to Coriolis force, so acceleration due to Coriolis force is fv, f is this, and v is uh, meridional component of velocity of wind from south to north, positive northward. And lastly, we also have acceleration in the meridional direction, dv dt, due to Coriolis force, is equal negative f u, where again f is Coriolis parameter, and u is uh, component of wind from west to east, positive eastward. So these are concepts that I kind of expect that you know one way or another, and using these concepts we will now solve many, many problems. I will have the same mini-series of videos on other concepts, uh, 
centrifugal force, pressure gradient force, solving Navier Stokes equations for various simplified uh, processes and phenomena, uh, continuity equation, all other concepts that I introduced on this channel, and then I will introduce new set of concepts and so on, that how channel will go in the future. Of course, I will at the same time cover various problems related to wind engineering and wind energy. So now, all that being said, let's spend next several hours on this May 1st, 2022, Sunday. There is no place I would rather be than solving various differential equations on this blackboard together with you. So let's check the first problem that you now also see on your screens. The first problem is as easy as it can get, and it says calculate Coriolis parameter for these five latitudes. And latitudes are 45 degrees north. Oh, first is, uh, sorry, first is 90 degrees north. I skipped one. 90 degrees north. 45 degrees north, zero degrees or equator, 30 degrees south, and 90 degrees south. It doesn't get easier than this because we already have equation for Coriolis parameter F. So F is equal to omega sine phi, where now when I, I will not constantly put uh, the intensity sign in that vector. If I put omega without vector intensity sign, I just mean it is a, uh, its intensity of that vector over there. So now we just plug in these numbers, but before that we need to know omega, and I can calculate omega here. So what is omega one more time? That's angular velocity of Earth. Well, that means one revolution in a time that takes for that revolution. So one revolution is two pi radians, and Earth rotates once in one day. That's how we define one day. Well, that is further equal two pi one day is 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. And I calculated this so many times in my life that I already know that solution is 7.27 times 10 to power negative 5 radians per second, or we just put it per second. This is angular velocity of our beautiful planet. Now we take that number here and we calculate all these. So A will be that F is equal to omega sine of 90 degrees, but sine of 90 degrees we know is 1. So I get that here result is just 2 omega. And that is 1.45 times 10 to power negative 4 second minus 1. So this is the maximum value of Coriolis parameter because sine cannot become larger than 1, which means 45, 0, 30 degrees south will all have smaller value of F. So let's calculate B. F is equal to omega sine in B, it's 45 degrees. And if you calculate that, I calculated it here. I'm not going to use a calculator this time. It's one point. 0 0.028 times 10 to power negative 4 second minus 1. 
So you can see clearly that Coriolis parameter here is weaker than in this case over here. C, calculate this quantity at the equator, zero degrees. So that is equal to omega sine of zero degrees. But this is the easiest case because I know that sine of zero degrees is zero. So this becomes zero. Another demonstration that Coriolis force is indeed uh, non-existent at the equator. D, now this is interesting one, D is 30 degrees south, southern hemisphere. So that is equal to omega sine, now this is where the most important part of the video uh, comes. If you are dealing with latitudes in the southern hemisphere, these latitudes are negative. So this is sine of negative 30 degrees. Sine of negative angle is negative sine of that angle. So this is minus 2 omega sine of 30 degrees. And that is equal, now we can just calculate this. And I did it here. So we get uh, negative 7.27 times 10 to power negative 5 second minus 1. So Coriolis parameter is negative uh, for the southern hemisphere. And again, we can see in the absolute value, it's smaller than at 45 degrees because this is 10 to power negative 5. Again, Coriolis force weakens as we approach equator. And E, lastly, calculate this parameter for 90 degrees southern hemisphere, which is namely south pole. We get that this is equal to omega sine of negative 90 degrees. And that is equal minus 2 omega sine of 90 degrees. And that is equal just negative this number. Minus 1.45 times 10 to power negative 4 second minus 1. This is the solution for problem number 1. In my opinion, the most important concept in this case, if you are a student, is to know that southern latitudes are negative and you have to take that into consideration when you are calculating sine of that angle the way I explained here. We are continuing exploring Coriolis force in next video.